and welcome to another tech video. Today we're going to be looking at a Draytech router and how you can configure two different LANs on the same box. So um, in our instance what we've got is we've got a business that is moving into an existing business premises using the same network or the same physical infrastructure. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this Draytech router to create two different LAN subnets and two different SSIDs and separate the traffic using the same WAN IP address. So we've got a single WAN connection, we've got two different LANs and we're going to use a single router to be able to do that. Right, so what we want to do is we want to create two completely different subnets on this router with um, a WAN connection, both subnets using the same WAN connection and both doing their own natting. So what you want to do first of all is we're going to go through the WAN setup and we want to configure WAN2. So at the moment you can see this is set for ADSL, so we want to disable that. We want to enable WAN2 and we're not using USB 3. So we're going to disable USB 3. The next thing we want to do is we want to set up our internet access. I'm going to select WAN2 and we're going to select enable. And we're going to call this fixed slash least because this, this is going to be a leased line. So we're going to select auto negotiation. We're going to leave that. We're going to select for our active mode. We're going to select always on and VLAN. We're going to leave that set to disable. And we're going to OK that. OK, so we need to get rid of that slash. I'm going to OK that. And then we need to reboot the router. Once you've rebooted the router, you should be able to log back on. What we're going to do, we're actually now going to set the password, which is under system maintenance administrator password. So the old password is admin because we've just, uh, it's a fresh installation. We're going to set our new password. And we're going to OK that. So that's our new password set. OK, so we're now going to go back to our WAN. We're going to go WAN 1 and we're going to set that to disable, which is our ADSL line. We're going to reboot again. Everything you need to do on this needs a reboot. OK, once that's rebooted, we're going to log back on using our new password that we set. And as you can see here, we've got a single LAN connection. We've got no WAN connection. So we're going to click on WAN2 here. And we're going to set this to static or dynamic IP. We're going to go back to our WAN connection. Physical type is auto negotiation, that's fine. And then we're going to go to our, so we're going to go back into our internet access, we're going to set that for static or dynamic. We're going to go to our details page and we're going to make sure that static or dynamic tab is selected. We're going to click on enable, and at the moment we're going to select obtain an IP address automatically. Now the reason for this is because actually we're setting this up at home so we're going to be using a DHCP address from our existing router um, to be able to configure the rest of the setup. So we're going to say OK to that and believe it or not it needs to reboot. So we're going to reboot it and the next thing we're going to do is actually we're going to plug our cable from our 
existing router, we're going to plug that into LAN port 4, which is labelled Giga LAN 4. So as you can see here now, we've got we've got our WAN port plugged into that port, and we've got our PC plugged into this port. Okay, so once that's rebooted, we're going to log back in again using our new password that we created previously. And as you can see here, we've now got an IP address from our router. In this instance, it's 192.168.0.47. If you were using um, a, a DHCP address from your ISP, then that would be populated here. But what we're going to do now is we're going to move on to the LAN setup. To do that, you want to select your LAN. And we're going to go to General Setup. That's fine, sorry. We're going to go to LAN, General Setup. And as you can see here, we've got our LAN subnet configured as this IP addressing. So we're going to change that. We're actually going to use, we're still going to use 192.168, but we're actually going to use 192.168.10.1. And you want to select your DHCP scope accordingly. So the DHCP server options, we're going to set to 30. We're going to select 200 IP pool counts, our default IP gateway address, which is same subnet as our Ethernet one. And then we're going to leave the DNS server blank at the moment. We can change that later if we need to. And then we're going to select OK. And then believe it or not, we need to reboot the router. OK, so now what we want to do is we want to connect back to our router, but we need to make sure that we connect to the correct IP address. So we want to select the IP address that we just created. We're going to log on and as you can see here our LAN subnet is now 192.168.10.1 DHCP is enabled and our LAN 2 is still disabled so we're going to go back to our LAN settings let's go back here okay so we need to come into our VLAN first so we need to enable our VLAN so we're going to say enable VLAN and for our VLAN 0 which is our first we can select any any VLAN we want. We're going to select, let's do VLAN 1, and we're going to select LAN port 1. We're going to select SSID 1, and we're going to set that to LAN 1. We're not going to give it a VLAN tag because we're not going to be using it. We're going to select VLAN 2 as our port 2, and our SSID of 2, but we're going to select this to LAN 2, and we're going to say OK to that. OK, we now need to add three so we're going to say vlan3 is port three but we're not going to be using an ssid on that and we're going to set that to lan one what this is going to be able this is going to enable us to just plug straight into the router in lan port three and get a connection to it okay so we want to enable that subnet so we're going to select it and we're going to let our router reboot and then we're going to reconnect OK, so now, as you can see here, we've got LAN 1 with that IP subnet and we've got LAN 2 with this IP subnet. And we want to change this IP subnet, so we're going to go back to LAN. We're going to go back to General Setup. We're going to select our Details page for LAN 2 and we're going to set this to 20. No reason for it, set it to whatever you want. And we're going to set this to... 30 for our DHCP scope and we're going to set that to 200 and we're going to go OK to that and we're going to select reboot the router and you can now see here that LAN1 is 192.168.10.1 slash 24 and LAN2 is 192.168.1.24. So that's the LAN taken care of. Now what we want to do is we actually want to go in and we want to create a wireless LAN. So we're going to create this and we're going to select um, N only and we're going to select auto as our channel. 
I'm going to go in, I'm going to say um, LAN1 for this. But I'm also going to say LAN2 for our second SSID. Now the reason for this is we have already told it that SSID1 is going to be LAN1 on our um, VLAN settings. And we've already told it that LAN2 is going to be LAN2 on our VLAN settings. So we were going to enable those. We're going to say OK to that. That will then start broadcasting both LAN1 and LAN2. Call them whatever you want to. But the thing to bear in mind is the index number. So index 1, index 2. We've already assigned that under the LAN VLAN settings. So SSID1 and SSID2. LAN1 and LAN2 for VLAN1 and VLAN2, which is port 1 and port 2 in the back of the machine. So let's go back to our Wi-Fi settings and we're now going to set our security. And we want to make sure that this is uh, fairly, fairly high up to date. So we're going to set our details here. It's weak, so we'll try. OK, so that's SSID 1 set. I'm going to select WPA2. If you've got WPA2 or even better WPA3, then use that or now SSL3. So we're going to set our Wi-Fi password for both SSID 1 and SSID 2 using the strongest encryption that we can. We're going to say OK to that, and that's now saved. Now, if you check your mobile phone, or in this instance, let's go in and find our, see what Wi-Fi networks we can find. There we go. So I've changed the Wi-Fi adapter. Um, I was using a 5 gigahertz only adapter. Um, so <coughs> I've inserted a, Wi-Fi 5 and Wi-Fi 4, so 5 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi adapter. And you can clearly see here and now our two LAN SSIDs that are being broadcast. So that's absolutely fine. That's working. So I can switch Wi-Fi off again now. And we are already connected. So let's now go and have a look at our status. So we've got our WAN2 connection, that's fine. We've got our LAN all connected fine. And our VLAN's all set up correctly. We've got both our SSIDs connected. So the next thing that I wanna do is I actually now want to disconnect my LAN cable and I'm gonna test out LAN port one. So VLAN one, so in theory, I should get an IP address in this range here, 192.168.10. So I'm gonna plug in to port one and you saw down the bottom there I've disconnected reconnected so now let's check our IP address okay so we can see here that we're picking up a 192.168.10.30 IP address which is correct and now if I unplug from port one in the back of the router and plug into port two in the back of the router again you can see down the bottom here disconnected and reconnected now let's check our IP address now this should be 192.168.20.30 or 20. Dot something or other. So 20.30, so that clearly separates the two um, networks. Now, because of our settings that we've got, we are not allowing um, LAN port, so port one to look at traffic from port two. So it's a way of completely separating your, um, your LAN subnets. So I'm gonna plug back into port one just so that I pick up a correct IP address and I can move around the, uh, the interface. This is a way of how you can have multiple subnets connected to the same router um, and separate the traffic completely, both in terms of Wi-Fi devices and plugged in physical devices. So the plan for this router is, this will be installed at a customer site. We'll have two switches, one switch for LAN A one, or LAN 1, one switch for LAN 2. 
um, and their devices will all connect into those um, various the two different switches. Traffic is completely separated. Yes, they're going to be able to um, see each other if they know how to do it, but in terms of basic traffic separation, this is a way to do it easily. And in our instance, we're going to be running two different companies in the same premises using the same infrastructure. So if you found that video useful, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Just want to say thanks for watching. And believe it or not, we'll see you in the next one.